come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I am going to review and page through the Traveler's Starter Set from Mongoose Publishing. So is this the quintessential edition of the venerable science fiction role-playing game, which is a must-have to add to your collection? Or should it just be jettisoned into the cold vacuum of space? Well, you'll find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, we are going to be taking a peek at the Traveler Starter Set. I'll be sharing my thoughts and giving it a review score in just a bit. But do want to mention, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that little notification bell because it will not only let you know when I upload standalone videos such as this, it'll also tell you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. As I mentioned, we're going to jump on into the Traveler starter set this is a box set which is from mongoose publishing this is referred to by many people as mongoose traveler 2e or second edition because there are loads and loads of different traveler titles out there both still in print and long out of print that confuse people so we've got like traveler 5 we've got mega traveler We've got Traveler the New Era, Traveler 2300, Classic Traveler, which is essentially first edition Traveler, and so on. So do you want to point out, this is Mongoose Publishing's Traveler, and this is their second edition. Inside this starter set box, you will find three books, totaling 336 pages. Also includes pre-generated characters, sector maps, and two six-sided dice. This starter set does carry an MSRP of $69.99, while you can also grab the PDF over at DriveThruRPG for $39.99. So let's jump on over to the other camera and we will dive on into Traveler Starter Set. Here we have the Traveler Starter Set, science fiction adventure in the far future. It's from Mongoose Publishing. This is the second edition of Traveler that Mongoose has put together. So, taking a look at the back here. Valeria 1 to Valeria 2. Increased thrust. Nail Beowulf before he leaves the gravity well and jumps. Good shot. Target's main drive is hit. Acceleration has ceased. Prepare boarding party. Tell them to watch out for any heroes. Matching velocity and rotation. This is going to be a good payday. Commence boarding. Traveler is a science fiction role-playing game of bold explorers and brave adventurers. The starter set contains everything you need to create one of these adventurers and begin exploring the galaxy. Spaceports, ancient civilizations, air rafts, cold steel blades, laser carbines, far distant worlds, and exotic alien beasts. This is the futuristic universe of Traveler, the original and classic science fiction role-playing game. Come visit the future. So I get a kick out of this opening here, this blurb here, because for years we have been introduced to the other side of this coin. It's Beowulf and it's like Mayday, Mayday, this is a free trader Beowulf. So here we have the attackers going after the Beowulf. So this is a box set. This is uh, kind of interestingly put together as far as the box because it's not flat. So the cover is a bit larger, a bit taller than the uh, the actual box. So it's kind of funny. You can have like 
kind of, I don't want to say a hard time, especially if you've got it between some other books in your game shelf, but kind of, kind of strange decision to go with this sort of a, a top on the box. It is cool though. It is a cool box. I especially like this nice touch where we've got the little strip of fabric, almost like a little bookmark for us to be able to pull these books on out because there's a lot of stuff in here. So I am going to show off everything that comes with the game itself. It does come with two six-sided dice, and uh, they are now part of my <laughs> dice bag. So I do want to mention there are two six-sided dice that come with the game. I was a little surprised it only came with two. I would have thought for sure we would have had more. But we have these huge sector maps. These are really big sector maps for you. And it is uh, dual-sided. They are blank. But I thought that was kind of cool that we got these included with the game. So we've got the blank side. And then we have the starting side for the Caladan sector right here. So that's Caladan sector there. But then you'll notice everything else is blank around it as the players explore. So we've got that. So we've got the, uh, the map. Fold that back up. Put that back into the box. We also have character pre-gens. These are uh, character cards, actually. Pre-gens on the cards here. So we have six of them. So we get a big bit of backstory about each of these characters. And then flip it on over and we have all their skills filled out. So we've got their characteristics. We've got their skills, weapons, finances. All of that is included. So a little more exciting to take a look at the back where we've got the images for the characters themselves. This being a starter set, a lot of times in many role-playing games, starter sets, starter boxes, you don't have character creation rules. That is not the case with Traveler. This starter set really does have essentially everything that's in the core book that you can get separately uh, broken down into two books. So there is character creation. There's equipment. There's all the information you need about psionics as well as spacecraft, is all within the book. So we have three books. We've got characters in combat, we've got spacecraft and worlds, and we've got the fall of Tynath, or Tanath, however you want to pronounce it. So taking a look at book one, I'm going to page through these, kind of talk a little bit about the system itself. Traveler has been around for a long time. I believe Traveler... I think it originally came out in 77, 78 ish. I know I picked up Traveler in the little black box that had three books. Uh, and uh, that was, I think, like 1980 ish. So I, I know there was a, a new edition came out in 81. I am not positive if I had the first edition box set or the second edition box set because I don't remember the exact date when I picked up Traveler. But I have owned various different editions of Traveler. I've got a soft spot for Traveler as well. So we kind of get into an introduction about the game, I'm talking about uh, different conventions of the game. It is a D6 system. You're effectively going to roll 2D6, add whatever characteristic bonus, as well as your skill level to your roll, and you're looking to better a difficulty number, a, a number that can change depending on what you're trying to achieve. A standard difficulty number is eight. So for many things you're trying to do, eight or better on your roll is going to give you a success. Now there are different grades of success. And I'll get into that in just a bit. But one of the things that most people know about Traveler, about the history of Traveler, is the character creation. And the character creation 
is something that I really enjoy because as opposed to the player just sitting back and kind of creating their own backstory, your character creation in Traveler is your backstory. And there is a lot of stuff that can go on in your backstory when you're creating your characters. Back in the day, it was possible for you to go through your character creation and have your character die during character creation, which is pretty funny, especially if you were, had already invested like 30 minutes into the process. I will admit that no longer is the case. You cannot die during your character creation. Your character can get messed up pretty badly. That is a possibility, but you're not going to just die. So we're going to go and uh, we've got our various different character archetypes. And one of the other cool things about Traveler is you can change your careers. So you might have a career doing one thing for a few years and then completely change your career, do something else. There are a lot of die rolls involved in your character creation to see if you can even join the, the career that you choose. You have to see if you advance, do you survive? If you don't survive, basically what happens is you're gonna roll on the mishaps table. And unless it tells you that it does not take place, uh, you are booted from that career. Now, there is a possibility of not losing your placement in that career in a mishap, but for the most part, if you fail your survival role, then that's what happens is you won't be in that career any longer. So we've got a variety of different choices for the characters as they pursue these careers. When it's your first career, you're going to get service skills all at a level zero. So it's kind of like your basic training. And as you progress, you're going to get to roll a die during each of your terms. And you're going to get to choose kind of what area of improvement you would like to try to have take place. One aspect of Traveler that is very, very different than just about any other role-playing games out there is your starting character is not just some you know, farm boy from planet of Tatooine who's never been anywhere and no, a lot, of, a lot of times your starting character in Traveler is uh, someone who's grizzled in their 40s and has lived a full life before becoming a Traveler. And I, I definitely dig that. I like the fact that you've got all these various different skills that are available to you. Just because you're beginning your character for role-playing purposes... That doesn't mean that they're just some, you know, some schlub, some zero level or first level schlub. So to kind of give you an idea of just some of the craziness that can take place in creating a character, my best friend, Elliot Miller, he was creating his first traveler character and started off as a merchant, spent eight years as a merchant, picked up some skills, then decided, hey, I'm going to be a pirate, ends up as a pirate, and then was captured and tried. The lawyer that he hired couldn't get him off. So after spending eight years as a pirate and actually taking part in a legendary crime, he was uh, sent to prison. <laughs> and then he spent eight years in prison. So, and a lot of it is just, you know, based on rolling your dice, what happens? So uh, he was not getting good survival roles. So that's, uh, that's kind of what was taking place. One aspect I think is also cool is we have this skills package. So when you're rolling up your characters, Traveler is, is a game where, you, and I know a lot of people tend to roll up characters as a group, but there are a lot of people just create their, their characters at home and then bring them to the first game session. Well, that's frowned upon in Traveler because each of your players should have their characters kind of tie in to other characters as well. So each character is going to have a connection to two other characters and you kind of come up with a little bit of a story. How do the two of them know each other? What, what's gone on? And they get a free skill out of it. Then on top of that, 
depending on the sort of kind of adventure campaign that the game master is looking to present, we have these skill packages. So you'll go around the table and each of the players is going to select one of these skills that they don't already have. So the traveler skill package is pilot, deception, electronics, gunner, gun combat, persuade, stealth, and medic, because those are the kind of skills that are gonna be utilized more often than not in a traveler style campaign. I thought that was very cool. So we also get the, some information about the different races. There are two main races that are covered in the core book. Here's the prisoner career that Elliot got to spend eight years in. So we get into skills and tasks, and this is where we start getting into what I was talking about as far as your action resolution. Second edition Traveler is, is interesting in, a, in some aspects because in some ways it's not very crunchy. It's, it's fairly easy for game masters to run and for players to wrap their heads around the vast majority of concepts in the game. The 2D6 plus your, your bonus for your characteristic plus your skill level against the difficulty number, that is pretty easy. And then we have the task difficulty. So an average is eight or better. So anybody who's got a plus two modifier to their role should have a pretty easy time passing an average check. Now that said, there's also boons and banes. So if it, you have a boon, you get to add an additional die to your 2d6. So now you're rolling 3d6. You're going to drop the lowest. If you have a bane, it's the exact opposite. You're going to roll 3d6 and you're going to drop the highest. We get into things like task chains, which are kind of cool as well, because once again, it's, it's kind of trying to, to have the, the players act as a team. So maybe one person's specialization is the sensors on the starship. So maybe they, they maybe they own a ship or they, they're basically uh, paying off uh, the mortgage on a ship. And one of the characters, their, their, their specialization, their role on board the ship is sensors. And maybe someone else is the gunner and someone else is the pilot and somebody else is the captain. You can chain different things together so that with when one character succeeds at something, it gives a bonus to another one of the player characters in succeeding doing something that's connected to it. It's pretty cool. I think it's a very interesting concept. It uh, takes a bit of finagling, I guess, to, uh, to get an understanding of, of when you would maybe use it. But the way I've seen it so far is that the players kind of decide, hey, Jeff, is it okay? What if we do this, this, and this? Do you think we could chain those together? And then it gives me an opportunity to say, yeah, you know what? That's a cool idea. Or say, well, no, I don't see how those really have anything to do with each other. But there isn't anything really like laid out in the rules specifically saying, okay, if you're going to do this, do this, 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 and this. Now, that's not to say that you won't find that in some of the adventures. I'm just talking about in the two core books in the starter set. So then we get into skills. And this is where the game kind of stumbles a little bit because there's a lot of different things that you, you'll want to read up on on the skills themselves. And sometimes it's, it's kind of difficult to understand, well, which skill should the player be using uh, as far as like rolling dice? Like, so for an example, uh, if, a, if a player character wants to tell if somebody's not being truthful or, you know, trying to interrogate somebody and how can they tell if they're actually being a, the, the information they're getting in return is true. It's not what you would think it would be, right? It's not going to be like a psychology science skill role. It's not going to be like a persuade skill. It's actually deception, which if you would think of deception right off the top of your head, you would think, oh, well, that's you trying to deceive somebody. But deception can also be used to try to determine 
if someone else is lying or cheating. So some of the skills are not as intuitive as I would like. One of the other aspects of the way the, the game is set up, the, the rules are set up, is they don't flow as well as they could. There are, there are actually still some, uh, some typos through the book. Not a ton. I mean, not where it's really going to distract you. But me being kind of a, you know, crazy about grammar and stuff like that kind of stands out a little bit. And then sometimes you get information that's kind of broken down in different areas where you would think that it should sort of be in one spot. I will point out the combat is not as uh, not difficult. The comp combat's pretty easy to wrap your head around. So then we get into equipment. There's a lot of different equipment. I do appreciate that we're also getting artwork for a vast majority of these items as well, except the augments. The augments kind of, you get advertising for some of the augments, which is a little odd. So portable computers, different computer terminals, medical and care supplies. So I do definitely dig the fact that we've got for artwork for a lot of these different items and the way that this is broken up. That is kind of how this uh, is going to finish up as far as the book is. We're looking at mainly different equipment, different weapons. Very, very happy to see that we have all the different weapons, for the most part, are illustrated. That, to me, is very important, especially in a science fiction game. You know, I understand what an assault rifle looks like. <laughs> or if something that's supposed to be kind of built along the lines of an assault rifle or pistol or what have you. A fusion gun? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little out. Plasma gun? Uh, I don't know. So we have the different weapon options. One of the cool aspects, too, with the different weapons is they can have these, like, special traits. So, for an example, like an automatic weapon has an auto trait. A weapon that has a scope has a scope trait. So I like that fact that it's, it's pretty easy to quickly see on a character sheet. Oh, their weapon does this? Okay, cool. All right, so I, get, I see the damage. I see the range. Oh, and it's auto? Cool. I like the fact that the weapons do have that info, as some of the equipment also has specific kind of like traits that are added to them as well, as opposed to having to, to memorize exactly what each of the different weapons do. So we also have vehicles. Not a ton of info about the vehicles. Now, I do understand that there is a, um, a separate book, a standalone book that's got way more equipment. There's also a separate book that uh, goes into details about more of the starships and things like that. But to get started in Traveler, this, these books really have all you need. So we'll just kind of finish up and get some, some artwork, some breakdown of some of the different vehicles. And that is book one. Let's take a look at book two here because Book two starts getting into spacecraft and worlds and creating worlds. One thing that I do want to point out that I thought was strange. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes things aren't laid out as intuitively as you would like. So for an example, psionics, which I would think is kind of part of the character creation aspect, is in this book. It's not in the characters in combat book. I thought that was a little strange. So now we get into like encounters and dangers. Uh, for the most part, the artwork's pretty solid. Some of it's a little uh, not as detailed or doesn't stand out as I would have liked. But we do get uh, an example of some different monsters. Some, I shouldn't say monsters, I should just say beasts. Planetary life forms. So we get some information about how uh, animals will react to the characters as well. We've got some random tables as far as different encounters. As I mentioned, uh, I 
Traveler uses a 2D6, but it also uses 2D6 as far as creating from 11 to 66. But for the vast majority of the time, you are going to be rolling two six-sided dice and totaling those together. So now we start getting into spacecraft operations. And this is where we start getting into what are the different roles of the di different characters on a ship. The combat system for spacecraft in Traveler is... To me, it almost feels like it's a little undercooked. But one aspect you need to keep in mind when looking at Traveler is if you're if you're utilizing Traveler for its core setting, the Third Imperium, it's not the same science fiction that you're maybe familiar with. It is not Star Trek. It is not Star Wars. It's a bit more towards the towards the like hard science fiction. But there's aspects to the space combat, like missiles. Missiles play a huge role in space combat. To the to the point, you've also got the, like sand throwers to try to uh, try to deflect like lasers to break up lasers. Some people will be a little surprised that, as far as in this book, now I can't tell you what High Guard has, which is kind of a, like a, an extra supplement that goes into detail a lot, about a lot of like capital ships and things like that. I think some people will be a little surprised by the lack of variety with some of the starship weapons. There aren't a ton of them. Kind of surprising. So we get some of the common spacecraft. We get all the stats. We get a bit of a deck plan. Some people will like the 3D deck plans. Some people won't. Some people would prefer to see just a top-down, kind of like isometric deck plan. I thought these are pretty cool. So we get a variety of different ships. A mercenary cruiser. I would not expect a mercenary cruiser to kind of look like this. Traveler ships all tend to have kind of a triangular vibe to them. That doesn't. <laughs> it's kind of a circular vibe. It is cool, though. I kind of like that. So going through the various different ships. The Scout Courier, which uh, people who have played Traveler in the past, this is usually the kind of ship they start off with, or start off with at least being on board. So we've got quite a lot of uh, variation with these different ships. Another aspect of Traveler that people might be a little surprised about is we don't see a lot of different fighters. There aren't a lot of different space fighters. So, you know, of course, like Star Wars, you got all the variety of different wing craft. Not so much in, uh, in Traveler as far as just the, the core rules. A slow pinnacle, a slow boat. So now all of a sudden we jump into the psionics, which, like I said, I thought it was kind of strange that, that this is actually in this book as opposed to the character book. So there are psionics available. It is something that uh, I know from past experience with Traveler, many people kind of try to shy away from or at least have very limited, uh, I would say most of the players are going to have very limited skill in psionics if any at all and it, it's kind of the way these rules are written as well that not everybody should be a scion interestingly enough uh elliot's son brian when we were doing the character creation in college at university he actually had a mishap that allowed him to roll as a scion so i thought that was kind of interesting so I mentioned that the rule system, on one, on one hand, you've got systems mechanically that are very, very easy, very simple to wrap your head around. And then you have other stuff that seems like strangely complex, bizarrely complex. Trade is one of those. And the traditional sort of traveler campaign 
is that you've got a, you've got your crew of player characters usually on a ship and it's it's firefly before firefly existed it's kind of picking up different jobs of various different stripes one you know one adventure you might be transporting cargo the next you might be uh transporting some scientists someplace another adventure you might be actually doing some scientific research on a planet you might be stealing something you might be pirating other ships so there's a lot of different stuff that can can be uh, going on in a traveler campaign but trade is big because the way the rules are written if you have a ship you have your upkeep you've got upkeep monthly upkeep of the ship and you have to come up with ways that you're paying for that ship and trade plays a big part of it that being said depending on the kind of players you have some people may not be too keen on that so i do want to point that out that uh, you might want to do some hand waving depending on the sort of group you uh run role-playing games for so then we're going to finish up with world and universe creation and one of the aspects of traveler that i've always thought was pretty cool was you can take a player character or you can take any kind of character you can take an npc you can take an npc you can take a planet and you can break it down to just kind of a code so basically sort of a code where it's numbers and letters and if you understand the game well enough you can say oh okay so by looking at this i know that this planet has uh, is a medium size and it's uh 80 percent the same gravity as earth and blah 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 where you look at a character and say oh well i can see here that their strength is a six their dexterity is a nine and uh it's pretty cool i, I love how that kind of breaks down so you don't have huge massive stat blocks uh about different planets about different npcs that are just stat blocks usually when you see a bunch of information about a planet or a person or a ship or what have you it's uh it's background so those are the two rule books that you need to run traveler from what i understand all the information in these two books is also the same information that is in the core rule book if you purchase that separately now one thing you wouldn't get in the core rule book is the fall of tanath or tainath whatever you want to consider uh, i will page through this real quick i will leave this spoiler free but i will give you an idea of what you're looking at if you go out and you pick up either physical or pdfs if you pick up uh different adventure releases so this is kind of campaign so it's going to give you a bit of a background getting started talking about the subsector that it's in space is huge one of the aspects uh that i mentioned that traveler is not star treks traveler is not star wars is uh the actual traveling through space so to kind of give you an idea we've got a subsector map and this is going to tell us the different systems in that subsector and depending on how powerful your jump engines are will determine how far you can jump kind of like hyperspace between planets uh many ships only have a jump of one or two so that basically means that you can jump one or two hexes and your jump will take a week it does not matter how long the jump might be so you might have a jump capability of three for a starship it's still going to take one week to travel that jump and while you're in the midst of a jump there's really nothing else going on you're you're kind of uh phased out of i don't want to say like reality because the player characters are still alive on the ship it's just that um nothing can actually affect them while they're jumping so this kind of gives you a breakdown of the planet this is kind of a famous sort of layout for traveler worlds 
we do have, if you were to cut this out, you could kind of actually make a globe out of this. So that's kind of cool. I always like that about Traveler. So we're getting a, a breakdown about the planet. So here, let's see. Um, I thought, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so as I, as I mentioned before, we were talking about the codes for the different planets. So this is the profile code. So this tells you everything you need to actually know about each of these planets. So very cool. I like, uh, I like that aspect of the design. So here we're getting a little bit of information about each of the planets that are in the subsector. Then we start talking about the campaign ref information. Like I said, I'm going to just kind of zip through this pretty quick. We do have some new equipment that is involved in here. We have a new race, a new alien race. Get some new, uh, we have some new weapons. Then we start getting into the various different adventures that are going to tie together to create the campaign. I definitely really, really like this book. I am going to keep it, like I said, completely spoiler free outside of what you've got to see in the images as I'm paging through. But a lot of times in a starter set, you're going to get uh, an introductory adventure that, if you're lucky, is going to occupy your player characters for one or two sessions. Usually no more than that. Here in the Traveler starter set, you are getting an entire campaign book. And one thing I will point out is, unlike many modern style role-playing games, you will find that in Traveler Adventures, for the most part, they aren't very verbose, I guess we'll say, that uh, they, they're kind of to the point. Now, uh, I have taken a peek at some adventure PDFs, and sometimes the uh, the lack of a lot of background and and page after page after page of backstory kind of works against some of the adventures because it feels like uh, some aspects of the adventures are left out. But you will get loads and loads of gameable information. Now, remember, you're a game master. You shouldn't expect everything just to be handed over to you like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Oh, then this happens, then you do this. Then this happens, you do this. That's called a railroad. You don't want to do that. So I really love the fact that we get this campaign and we get introduced to a brand new alien race. I thought that was pretty sweet as well. So, and it clocks in at... Almost 100, uh, a little over 100 pages. Yep, there we go. Clocks in at 104. So once again, as I mentioned, um, as far as like the NPCs and stuff, I'm, they have this broken down kind of normally. You would normal kind of see uh, like a stat block, but usually you would see just like six, eight, seven, and then you've got A, B, C, D. So anything that's over nine, so like a 10 becomes an A, an A, that's a B. But as you can see, talking about the different characters, some of the major characters, just kind of bite-sized chunks to make it easier for you to take a look at at the table. So that is the fall of, I was, I have pronounced it Tynath, so I'm sure I'm wrong. So in the starter set, we've got the... Sector map, we've got these six pre-generated characters. You know what, I'll just, well, they're upside down. So there we go. Ding. Always make sure when you're putting stuff back in the box, you keep this, this little uh, bookmark over here because it'll make things so much easier getting the books out. So we've got the Fall of Tanath, or Tynath. We've got the spacecraft and worlds. And we've got the characters in combat. Plus six-sided dice, a set of six-sided dice. And that is what we find inside the Traveler starter set. We're going to swing over to the other camera, and I am going to give you my final thoughts as well as provide a review score. 
So, what are my thoughts about the Mongoose Publishing Traveler Starter Set? I like it. All in all, I really think it's a very, very well done production. I like the fact that it the box set kind of gives you the three books, kind of harkens back to the first boxed edition that I had. So I, I get a kick out of that. I mean, I know some people are going to be wondering, well, how come, you know, you got a, you got a starter set, but you also have a core rule book you can get. You don't want to get both. I do want to point out, you don't want to get both because as far as my understanding, the two books in the starter set equate to everything that's in the core rule book as well. So don't double dip, save yourself a little bit of money, either go with the core rule book or go with the starter set. So I do have some critiques. They're, they're minor, they're, they're not huge, but there are a few. Uh, there are some typos, uh, some, some weird presentation flubs, I would say throughout the books. Character creation is very cool. I love how you have a, a backstory that you create along the way. I know some people will be bummed out that your characters can't die during character creation. But I do want to point out that uh, there is a flowchart that's included to help assist you your first few times creating characters. And I got to be honest, it's a little more confusing than it should be. Because there is a kind of a cool flow that you get into as far as creating the characters especially if you've got multiple players around the table, which you should when you create the characters. But uh, also, the presentation isn't as intuitive as I would have liked with the two core rule books because there's aspects to, like, say, character creation that you'll find later on in book one that should have been earlier when the main gist was character creation. So... Like I said, there are some issues I have with the presentation as well as it not being as intuitive as it could be. Sometimes the writing is a little dry as well. It's just kind of, this is this, this is that, here you go, bing, 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 which is fine. I don't really mind that because I'm kind of used to that from all the old school games that I played over the years and game books I've read over the years. But some people who are used to a more modern approach might find the presentation a little bit dry. Also, the other critique I have is really about spaceship combat. I love the fact that each of the characters are all going to have their specific role during combat on the ship, or they should at least try to have a role on the ship. That said, I find that uh, some of the weapons that are available, just I'm, I should say the weapon selection available is a bit light. And as written, space combat doesn't seem as exciting as it could be. Seem to feel like it needs a little more oomph. Now, that's not to say that there aren't rules that are located in High Guard, which is an, an additional supplement that covers a lot of military capital ships and starship combat and things like that. That is a possibility. But in the core starter set here little light on the uh, action-packed spaceship battles which leads me to point out that this is not star wars this is not star trek this is a very particular sort of science fiction it's a bit more on the hard science fiction side so a little closer to star trek as opposed to star wars but there's also the ability at least written in the book, to kind of create your own sorts of adventures. Like, essentially, travelers are Firefly before there was a Firefly, <laughs> is how I had mentioned earlier how the approach really is. And that is kind of the traditional way to run Traveler. There are all different kind of campaigns that you can utilize. Personally, I think the rules are best suited to a traditional traveler approach. That said, there is tons and tons of information out there about the era of the Third Imperium. So game masters out there don't have to be ultra creative because there is 
tons of already published material and loads of info out there online about the various different sectors and subsectors and so on and so forth. All in all, like I said, I really do think this is an excellent product. The production is really, really nicely done. Like I said, I got a few little quibbles, but all in all, I really do like this. I really can recommend this to folks who want to get that classic Traveler gameplay. If you've heard over the years about people who played Traveler and you want to get started, you want to check it out, this is most certainly an excellent way to do so. It does carry a $69.99 MSRP. And I got to be honest, I think it's a pretty good deal. I know a lot of people would say, whoa, $70, really? But one thing that really stands out about this starter set is the two books equate to the core book. You're getting everything that you need. It's not a pared down system that is being presented to kind of dip your toes into the waters. This is Traveler. This is 2E Traveler from Mongoose. Also included is the third book, which is the campaign book, that adventure supplement book. Most starter sets will have just a really short introductory adventure. Sometimes it's only good for a session, maybe two, three sessions tops. This is a full-fledged campaign that is included as well. So I was very impressed by that. Really, really liked that fact as well, because a lot of times with starter sets, a game master jumps in, they're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then they're like, wow, this is all that there is as far as the adventure? Okay, so I guess I'll have to kind of get some other stuff so I can follow this up right away, which is fine. It's just, I think it's very cool that we get a whole campaign in here. All right, that all said, in the end, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give the Traveler Starter Set from Mongoose Publishing a very, very solid 8.5. Point six out of 10. It is that good. So that is it for this time out. As I always like to say, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that notification bell. So it'll inform you when I upload standalone videos such as this. But it'll also tell you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. All right, that is it for this time out. So until I see you next, as I've been saying during this time of pandemic, be smart and stay safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. And once again, thank you very much for watching.